Alec Graham, Graham from Hyde in Greater Manchester is one of the drivers going solo. Right, you know all about Citroen 2 CVs, they are incredibly quick, um, they have lots of aero on them and they can't slip through them at all. Forget that, this is one of the closest and best races you'll find all day. They may not be the quickest cars, but boy, do they deliver bags of entertainment. We're in business. Down towards Gerrards they go, Sammy Fritchley leads the way with Wayne Cowling in the blue and bronze car trying to get second, but at the inside squeezes Leon Davis in 57, and that's the one that goes second. Then the uh, blue over white livery coming now towards the step straight for the first time. 30 minutes of racing, plus pit stops, plus rally cross at the back. Everybody's away cleanly. Mallory Park in 1989 was the scene of the first ever 2CV race. One or two of the cars, in fact, were even in it uh, and are in this race as well. And look, one great clump of French technology heading to the S's. Yeah, they're going to be using this back straight, especially as the wind is going the wrong way for them down there. As you can see now, on board with our with our driver number 10, Matthew Hollis. So on board with him, looking at the, the concentration. He's in third place at the moment. His Sparco seatbelts are done up nice and tightly, and he's looking very relaxed at the start of this race. He's now third place. So we've got loads of towing is going to be happening. These cars aren't that aerodynamic. They're not that fast, but they really do use each other around them. And as we saw from Donington Park, those of you watching a couple of weeks ago, we saw a fantastic race. The lead changed so many times on the last lap or so, and it was just unbelievable. So we're in for a real treat with this race. It's already unfolding to be a very, very close battle already. And the fact you have to factor in pit stops as well is something else. There is Matthew Hollis. Has he got a problem? He's waving people by. His dad and his brother share a car in the order as well. Yes, he has got a problem. He's slowed right down and he's waving people by and so much for the camera, I'm afraid. The curse has struck because he has slowed. Everybody's gone crawling past him and Matthew Hollis now has got to make his way round to the pit lane. He's also got to try and keep out of everybody's way. But there is some bit of good news that happened with uh, Matthew the other day. He actually won the Euro Millions. He won £2.70 on the Euro Millions. So a bit of good news for him, even though he hasn't finished here. And, um, he hasn't has had a problem with so far today. That's a season's budget in two CBs, I think. It's probably one of the uh, cheapest forms of racing you can do. These cars don't need a huge amount of work on them. The racing is close but clean, largely. And the parts are available. You can buy a race-ready car for not very much. Ah, now, this is an unusual line through the S's. It is one that is not necessarily going to gain you places, but it does draw you to the attention of the director. Back on track, and the tin snails head up towards the hairpin. More places lost. Up front then, just to go back to the race for a moment, it is still uh, Sammy Fritchley leading the way. In second place is Leon Davis as they come over the line. Third was Matthew Hollis, but it is now Wayne Cowling. So that's the top three. Wayne Cowling in the blue and bronze cart. Leon Davis in the blue and white. Sammy Fritchley, 2CV preparer, leads the way. And Sammy, very quick driver, sharing with Pete Sparrow. That still is a car I think that's going to be hard to beat as the field now works its way onto the step straight. Ah, oh, that's why he's pitted, it's a smashed windscreen look. We didn't see that from the onboard, but he can from that angle, so that's Matthew Hollis who is in, and also in is Adam Bollens, the Grantham-based personal trainer. Anybody got a new windscreen? That's why his visor was down, it was up when we first saw the onboard camera, then he put his visor down and waved everyone through, and I thought, that was strange, why would he have his visor up and down? So that was probably why. There you go. Bits of glass on the seat, and that, I think, is the end of that. So, it is Sammy Fritchley leading, but she goes wide, and Liam Davis comes up alongside as the cars work their way towards the Devil's Elbow this time around. 26 and a half minutes to go. Yes, that's how you do it. You have to rip the tread out, rip all the glass out. You take out the front screen, I think you have to take out the back, and then you can go racing. Peel the wipers away. This isn't the cleanest of pit stops, but hopefully it's an effective one to get Matthew Hollis back into the race. He's lost a lap. Shards of glass now all over the floor, and Sammy Fritchley leads the way. Leon Davis then in second spot. These aren't the mandatory pit stops, of course. They come between 10 and 20 minutes. Now there on the inside, Mike Storey trying to go through, and he does go through ahead of Simon Crook, and there's somebody else in strife there, which is Martin Harrell, I think, possibly. Yep, that's it, Martin Harrell in the 47 fine print car. So um, had an incident there at the S's a little bit further back on the circuit, so um, that's a real, real shame for that one. Now this is on board with Matthew Hollis. Let's have a look and see if we can see when the windscreen smashes. So visor's up. There you go. A little bit of glass flew through. The, there you go. And it's in his left, been in his left eye there. That's what you call proper. You know, really in, in the thick of it there in the cockpit there. Uh, so visor's down, and then that's when he starts waving everyone through. This is the pit stop we're seeing now, and back out the car. Now, instead of taking the rear windscreen out, they've taken the boot out. Regulations say that the, the air must go through from the front and out of the back, and it's the boot they've taken off rather than the rear window. Is that the Harold car yes, to rejoin? It is. It is. Yep, it is. And it's Martin Harold, 
Sprint Company director who started in that car. In the meantime, Sammy Fritchley leads the way. Remember this race that's going on. Uh, Sammy Fritchley is ahead. Liam Davis is second, and Wayne Cowling is third. Twas ever thus. Tied together by a string of French onions as they go around Gerald's there. This is lap five, 25 minutes of the race remain, and the gap, such as it is, is four tenths of a second. There is Liam Davis starting in 57 in second spot. Sadly, though, some of these dramas that we've had have broken up the pack a little bit, but I still think they're all going to bunch themselves up again before much longer. In fourth place in the background is Alec Gray in this car that he runs in the annual 2CB 24 hour race. Now, this is what happened at the S's. Oh, I see. One on the grass, joined by another. Thankfully, nobody rolls because with the shape of these cars, if they dig in, sometimes it can be a little bit uh, blurry, can't it? Even though they're famous for their suspension, you know, with um, having eggs in the car over a ploughed field, still, you know, going sideways off a race circuit onto the grass is still a dangerous place to be. Sammy Critchley here leading the race has quite a tough job on her hands because she not only has to break the air, she also has two or three hungry uh, hungry guys behind her trying to chase her to get that lead as well. So a real, a real battle for her to keep the lead. There's Matthew Hollis in the car demonstrating Citroen's best air conditioning facility. Sammy Fritchley then moves across to one side to try to break the toe heading down towards Gerald's, then moves back across, claims the line for the corner, and 45 in the pit lane with a problem. Uh, Ash Carter started, and Michael Fox, who raced for the 4-1600s in the very early days of the category, he's been racing for a long, long time, he's something like 78 years of age now, Michael Fox. Uh, hopefully he'll be able to take over and do the second stint, but that car is looking at the moment a bit poorly. This is the lead battle, three of them, nose to tail. Leon Davis, the man in the middle, trying to attack Sammy Fritchley, but wide behind him there goes Wayne Cowling, switches from one side to the other, up towards the hairpin they come. I still think that Sammy Fritchley plus Pete Sparrow, who is four times a champion, is a combination that's going to be very hard to beat, but she just cannot get away, can she? No, and I'm quite interested on the fourth place car, Alec Graham. So he's in the car that has won the 24-hour race so many times now, you know, twice consecutively. So really looking forward to seeing him catching up. But his lap times aren't looking as good as they should be. So he's about seven tenths off the leaders at the moment from Sammy's times of a one minute nine. Um, he's doing one minute seven. So he's about seven tenths quicker in, two tenths quicker that lap. So Alec Graham, the sort of the, the maroon burgundy coloured car in fourth place that we just saw in the back of our shot there, is definitely going to be with these three guys in the next three or four laps, I predict. Leon Davis did the fastest lap of the race, though, last time. That's helped by a toe. There is Wayne Cowling. All of these top three cars have to change to a different driver. In some cases, the co-driver may be quicker. In some, might be a touch slower. Whereas Alec Graham is the leading soloist, so we know he can go to the end. And Leon Davis there gesticulating to... Wayne Cowling to say, come on, work with me, we need to go after the leader, but Cowling gets it all wrong all over the grass, it goes left, it goes right, but it stays upright, bounce, 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 back onto the road, that takes him out of the lead equation for the moment, and here comes Alec Graham to try to do something about third place, so Wayne Cowling drops away, he's still going though, in fifth place in the background coming up to the hairpin was Glenn Oswin, the man from Boston, so now the lead battle is down to two. Sammy's definitely got control of this race because no one's really been that close to her. She's very, very quick around the back bit of the circuit, but they seem to sort of catch her on the exit of um, Gerrard's, which is the corner they're approaching now, which is a long, sweeping right-hander. But Cowling going wide there, by the way, 10 out of 10, fantastic save, well done to him. Um, but we'll give Graham now a chance maybe to get tagged along and, and use his toe to then try and work together to then come up to the top of the, um, the, top of the table even more. Sammy Fritchley last time through, by the way, did the new best lap of the race. She's not getting a toe from anybody, but even so, able to do the best lap of the race. And ahead of her in the distance, you can see, is the car of uh, Matthew Hollis, as the leaders now work their way down once again towards the S's. This, remember, not part of the championship, the Citroen 2CV series that uh, has been to Donington and Croft, and the next stop for it is Silverstone and then Browns, and it's the 24-hour race, the annual 24-hour race that rounds out the season. Down to the hairpin comes Sammy Fritchley, a puff of smoke, the car turns through the hairpin, Ian Davis then in second place, not actually staying on the back of the leading car on this lap. No, they seem to have um, seem to have definitely spread out a little bit, really. And just to um, say, you know, well done to Frank Barnard, who's doing doing fairly well. He's 75 years old, 75 years old, and he's got the number 75 on his car as well. So he's the sponsor of this 2CV race here at Mallory Park, and he's just written a fantastic book, an epic novel of family class and warfare as well, and we've literally just got about a minute or so before these guys can start to do their pit stops, before the window opens. Race leaders then onto the step straight. The pit window is about to open, so that is going to affect the race order a little bit as people come in on different laps, so expect things to shuffle, and then we'll see 
whether that's going to have an effect on places after the window closes. Glenn Oswin just at the moment ahead of Carol Wills as the cars go onto the stem straight. So two more have got themselves together. They've broken up a little bit, but they haven't got pockets of cars still racing against one another. And then behind them, the next pair is 22, just heading, Mike Storey. And then behind in 58, it is Simon Crook, who was bouncing on the grass early on. Here they come, up towards the hairpin. We've got now 19 and three quarter minutes of the race remaining. Nose to tail as they turn their way through the hairpin. This is for fifth place. Pit stops can take place now that the pit window is open. It lasts for 10 minutes. So the middle third of the race, effectively, is when you can pit. And the race leader has just gone across the line but doesn't pit, nor does Leon Davis. And for third place, Wayne Cowling goes through. For fourth place, Alec Graham stays out. And then the next train of cars, you can see in the background, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, all go through. Nobody pitting us yet. So it's really important for these guys to start looking at their pit boards, look at their pit crew, look at what team clothing they wear, and actually start to sort of tell, you know, be told when to come into the pits as well. Because once you get out on the circuit, as a driver, it's very, very easy to sort of forget about coming in for a pit stop and pit stop because you're thinking, well, I'm having fun out there, why should I come in? But it's all part of the rules and it's also fair because that other par partner in the car has probably paid for half of the race as well this weekend. So it's uh, a real team effort, but really easy to sort of forget to, to see, look at your pit crew. As you see battles there with two, two cars identical, they're going sideways through the through the Dunlop S's. They're flat out through the Dunlop S's, absolutely flat out. And then we've got Hollis, our camera car there with no boot on it. Remember that windscreen was smashed a little earlier. So he's definitely got his visor down and um, probably having a nice little breather out there. That's true. The point you make about the second driver, as I think Sammy Fritchley indicator on, is about to pit. And this is all a bit of practice, isn't it, for the 24-hour race. There was also, a few years ago, a separate championship for the endurance races. Indeed, the leader in, and Sammy Fritchley then comes in, as does second and as does third. So the top three all pit on the same lap. And Sammy Fritchley gives way to Pete Sparrow. It is going to be Liam Davis in second to hand over in a moment to Peter Rundle. So the top three in the pits means that now Alec Graham becomes the race leader. This little battle, which is absolutely side by side now, Carol Wills trying to gain ground, uh, goes up three places in the order as well. Now Simon Clark rejoins in two, Peter Rundle is away in 57, and Pete Sparrow leaves the nest in 97. There, 36 just secures the place going into the S's. So that's Carol Wills, who will give way to Chris Tovey, staying ahead now of Glenn Oswin. Right, out of the pits, here they come. 57, which is now Peter Rundle, there in the background, car number 50, that has yet to stop, that's still Ian Arnold. And I think Pete Sparrow, yes, he has got out well ahead of them, hasn't he? So that was a very, very good stop between Sammy Fritchley and Pete Sparrow going now through the S's, making their way for the 11th time up towards the hairpin. So, at the end of the lap, it's 44, Alec Graham, that becomes the race leader, and we'll see when Pete Sparrow crosses the timing line where it's put it, but in real terms, Charlie, he's come out with a much, much bigger advantage over everybody else, hasn't he? Yeah, he's just a little bit slower on his lap times, really. Sammy, Sammy left the race doing 1 minute 9 dead, and his last, uh, last lap was a 109.7, and his best lap's been at 109.2, so he's actually a couple of tenths still off the front-running pace that he was trying to tag on to earlier on, so a little bit worried that he is using this day as a test day, so I don't think he's too worried, but at the same time, he's a competitive guy and still wants to win, so... so um, Let's see if he can pull something out of the bag and, and, and stay in the lead. Well, the best of the pit stoppers then is Pete Sparrow. And as I was making the point, he's come out with a much bigger advantage. Another one heads for the pit lane. From the background, you can see Mallory Park these days doesn't have a huge number of pit stop races. Oh, look at this down at the hairpin. Just squeezing up on the inside to retake a place is Glenn Oswin. Now, this is for fourth, going ahead of Carol Wills in 36. But the two of them almost overlap coming into the Devil's Elbow, but I think Glenn Oswin is going to stay ahead. Yes, he does, as they come through the corner, making their way now then up over the timing line. Anybody pitting? Yep, one or two peel off. What about that battle? Yes, uh, Carol Wills comes into the pit lane to give way now to Chris Tovey. So the pit lane getting a bit more busy, and there, ready to stop, is Carol Wills. Driver change then. The car that's been pushed away, you can see uh, Adam Bolland's car just ahead to the right. The Grantham Bay's personal trainer, second season in the championship, but I'm afraid an early retirement. We started with 20 cars, but we've lost at least two of them, and one or two more have lost laps by dramas early on in the race. 
lane getting busier again. You can see in the background, as we are now on lap number 13, Alec Graham is the leader yet to stop. In second place at the moment is Tom Perry yet to stop. And in third place is Mike Storey yet to stop. And of course, although we saw Matt Hollis pit early on to have the windscreen sorted out, he's got to make his mandatory stop between the window. So he's going to come back in, which will lose him yet more time. We are just about at the halfway point. There is 66 coming in, which is uh, Louis Tyson to give way to Miles Lacey. Youngest combination in the race because Louis is 18 and Miles is 20. And that car is about to rejoin any moment. There's no set time to do this. It's as quick as you can. Get back into the race. So Alec Graham continues to lead the way. Many of the teams splitting this, so they come in at the halfway point. Fifty blasts back into the race. Ian Beale now the wheel. And there's one there, look, with trim hanging off. Legacy of earlier fun and games. And that is the Martin Harold car that he shares with John Davis. That shouldn't affect it too much, though, with the aerodynamics. It should be absolutely fine, as long as... Um it doesn't sort of really flap around, but it looks like it's been held on so well at the front there, it should be absolutely fine, so not a problem. And being involved in pit stops, when I used to race GTs many years ago, um, it is quite a fraught place to be. You've got marshals there that are constantly watching what you're doing and the belts done up properly. Can you get the door open in time? And it, it's quite a fraught place. And also the heat of the car, the temperatures and everything builds and um, you're trying to, you know, the adrenaline's going and it's a, a really quite a fraught place to be in a, in a 24 hour or a pit stop race. So, so really exciting stuff from the, from the pit stops. Race leader coming towards us, that is Alec Graham. He's done 14 laps and he now leads by 2.9 seconds. Now he is lapping in the 1 minute 10s, whereas Pete Sparrow is lapping in the 1 minute 9s. And so, in real terms, he's pulling away because this car has yet to stop. It will rejoin behind and I suspect it's going to struggle to bring down the gap. Now where's the opposition to Pete Sparrow? It is going to come from Leon Davis. He's lapping at the same sort of pace and there are five seconds between them but you're only pulling back tenths rather than big chunks, and so it is still going to be quite a difficult uh, race for them. But you've got uh, Leon Davis and Simon Clark absolutely nose to tail, running in sixth place overall. Pit stops unwind as Frank Barnard rejoins the race, and with 12 and three-quarter minutes of the race to go, we'll be back at Mallory Park right after the break. Pete Sparrow leads this two-driver race in the Citroen 2 CVs at Mallory Park. The car has made its pit stop. Pete Sparrow does the second stint. It leads outright, 
Sammy Fritchley did a cracking job to lead throughout the first stint, and she is in the pit lane with Andy J. David, well, Sammy, they say practice makes perfect, and you had practiced the pit stop. Well, we had to. We had to. It's the only time we can make up some time in this race. So, got to be done, and it worked like clockwork. You were the first in, it was super quick, and I believe you're in the lead at the moment. Oh, that's good. That's what we wanted. That's where we wanted to be at this point in the race. So, that's really good going. Well, you gave it in the lead, and you would expect the least, wouldn't you? So, I think you're a couple of seconds ahead. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> How do you, you see it going? Because the, the guy behind you has just had the fastest lap, so could you be caught? Oh, we can always be caught. Only takes one little slip and for him to catch her. So we'll just have to wait and see what the rest of the race holds. All right, well, we'll keep our fingers crossed for you. Thanks ever so much. David, back to you. Thank you. This is the battle for second. This is the group that's trying to catch uh, Sammy Fritchley's car, driven by Pete Sparrow. Now, at the head of this at the moment, you have got uh, 57, which is now Peter Rundle and number two is now in the hands of Simon Clark. They are running absolutely nose to tail and ahead look is the car they're chasing. Down they come towards the S's and this is now a race with nine minutes out of the 30 still to go. The pit window is closed. Great battle is going on for second place. Now Charlie Butler Henderson knows all about two CVs. How come you've got these two running together when you think they might be holding each other up but actually catching the car ahead? Because these cars haven't got that much power and they're quite unaerodynamic, as we can purely see, and they're well known for it, they're basically using each other to get pulled along. So they, it's called a tow, so you're getting like sucked along by the other car behind, and they're basically just using each other. They're very experienced, they know exactly what they're doing, so they're not fighting with each other. One of the car, the car in front is breaking the, um, the wall of air that the car is coming up against, the other car is coming up behind it, and they're just pushing each other along. So absolutely brilliant stuff. And car number 57 has just set the fastest lap time of the race, a 107.8, which is an unbelievably fast lap time compared with what Sammy's lap times were earlier, which were like sort of 108, 109. So amazingly quicker um, in, the second, in the second part of this race. Maybe they were carrying more fuel, you never know. So the car's also getting lighter, and these guys are getting more familiar with the circuit. And you can see, literally, they are pushing each other along. You can't even see the white car that was in the front. Now they come. Stuff. It's the S is number two. Simon Clark looks for a way by. Peter Rundle almost goes a little bit too deep through the S's, but gathers that all up once again. Pete Sparrow leads the way. 2.8 seconds to the good. And we have got now seven and three quarter minutes of the race remaining. For second and third places, Rundle and Clark turn their way out of the hairpin. Behind them in fourth place is Tom Perry having a good run. And Alec Graham has dropped back into fifth. He led during the pit window, but that car hasn't really looked as quick as it needs to do today. There in the pit lane, I'm afraid to say, is the damaged car of Martin Harold, who is the man at the front of it. And he does a lot of hard work behind the scenes of the 2CB yes. Championship as well, so he's organised the sponsor for this weekend, got him a drive in the car and um, helping lifting up the bonnet of the, of the car as well then. So uh, maybe it was him that did the damage. Martin, uh, must try harder. Indeed, yes. I think it was in that first stint we saw him bouncing all over the grass and the uh, sticky tape has come out to try and hold bits of the car back together. Now, second and third, the gap between the top two is 2.2. You're looking at second and third going down the step straight. Pete Sparrow is being caught, isn't he? And these two are working together. You're not seeing Simon Clark dodging in and out of the draft and trying to take the place away. They are working together. They're doing a very sensible job here. And it might just pay dividends. Yeah, it might just pay dividends. You can see there, he's, they're just reeling him in bit by bit, bit mm. by bit. You know, one tiny gear change from, um, from Sparrow in the, in the leader. It, it can all go wrong. So there we go, look, even much, much closer now on the exit of the hairpin there. They're flat out as they go through Devil's Elbow. They're what, absolutely the pinned to the floor. Flat out? Yes, yes, right. they're flat out, okay. David, yes. <laughs> they are absolutely pinned to the floor, flat to the floor. Um, and also you've got some cars that have got different carburettors as well. Some cars have got Weber carburettors and other cars have got Solus carburettors and they rev slightly differently as well. So it's, it's quite also interesting when talking to some of the teams in the pits about what goes on behind the scenes to get a 2CV reliable and as quick as possible? Out of Gerrards they come for the 21st time. The lead gap, which was well over three seconds, is now 1.1. So Pete Sparrow is certainly being caught. And they can't get much closer than that, can they, for second place? We've almost now got the three leaders together. And the one to watch is the one in the middle, 57, because Peter Rundle at the wheel of it has done the least slow lap of the race. He turns into the S's now, inching up onto the back of the race leader. 
Unbelievable stuff. There was a great shot from our camera guys there. Just actually seeing the cars bumper to bumper. I told you they would be pushing each other around, and they certainly were. And the leader, the lead's just gone. These three are going to be tied together. They put a blanket over these three yeah. in a second, and it's going to be a last, um, a last few lap dies. We've got five, just over five minutes left of this race, and I think we're in for a real treat. Could it be... Could it be the red car, blue and the white one, or the gold and dark blue one that's basically just been sat there in third place, just helping them along, just getting, using the toe and just sort of basically pushing each other along to get them up to that top spot. Pete Sparrow, the race leader, the second of the cars that went through the shot because it's a bat marker ahead. His track record in 2CB is very good indeed. Four times a champion, seven times the 24-hour race winner. But his lead is disappearing, and once again, Simon Clark right on the tail of Peter Rundle, who runs out wide. Oops, oh. a contact, and that was the bat marker getting in the way, because that was John Davis, who was taking over Martin Harold's car. He was swiped on one side, almost into the path of another. Simon Clark picks up second place, and the bat marker having a part to play in that, so second position has changed, coming onto the straight. Yeah, sitting duck springs to mind. You've got the car that we've just seen in the pits there, the Harold car with that front left wing just flapping around. And um, looks like it might have a bit of suspension damage as well. Just the it's, it's wallowing, yeah. sort of bobbling up and down. And here's a replay. Absolutely brilliant stuff here. So he goes wide. They tucks out of the toe. And then, oh, you're there. Oh, right, I didn't realise that. So then they they been a bit of an issue there with the bat marker. But equally, the bat marker, I think, wasn't paying attention to uh, Peter Rundle behind because he just drifted wider and wider. And Peter Rundle had nowhere to go except on to the grass. Now... Race leaders turning their way through Gerrards. This is lap 23. We've got four more minutes to go. The lead gap is down to 0.8 of a second. So far in the championship this year, Ainsley Bousfield has had one win, Alec Graham three. You're looking at people here who've not had a victory this season. I know this doesn't give you points at the championship, but it does give you a certain amount of pride. And down they come once again towards the S's. So up front, it's Pete Sparrow. Is he going to be able to stay there for another three and a half minutes? This is now another proper Citroën 2CV battle, isn't it? Because you've got three of them absolutely as one. Yeah, car number two, though, is very, very quick on the second part of Gerrard's, which is that long sweeping corner. We've now gone through the Dunlop S's. We're now coming up to the hairpin. We've got a change of lead as well. So third to first in the last bit. Unbelievable stuff. So th third to first in just one corner. David, what do you think of that? Well, it might change again, mightn't it? Because although Pete Sparrow has dropped back, now we come through the devil's elbow with back markers ahead. So the new race leader is going to be 57. So Peter Rundle has done it. Pete Sparrow is second. And Simon Clark, who was on the outside line looking for a position, didn't quite get it. But he's there in third. Sparrow back up the inside. Thank you very much. He says, I'll have my lead back once again. Two and a half minutes just over remain. And Pete Sparrow now is the man in charge. <clears throat> once again in charge being about a car's length and of course now he's the man giving the toe to the pair behind down they come this is the step straight heading towards the s's clock ticking away and sparrow he's going to have to defend but he doesn't because up the inside comes peter Randall. is it going to be that you don't want to lead onto the last lap is now their aim to be second and therefore make your move against the man ahead who will give you the toe rather than be the hunted, if you like. Yeah, it's looking that way, isn't it? It's absolutely looking that way. And the leader just darts across the track to get the racing line because he's thinking, well, if I go in tight, which is where I'm forced to go in, I'm going to be slow on the way out. And I want to break away from these guys and try and get, uh, and get to win because there's only a minute and 55 seconds remaining of this race. So well, we're going to get another couple of laps in, yep. I'm sure, just. And, the, you know, he just wants to get away and get gone. And he has been putting in the fastest time so far um, of the race. Leaders over the line, and that time it was 0.147 of a second between the top two. Peter Rundle led over the line, but Pete Sparrow leads into the corner. It'll be the last lap next time around. So there's this and one more still to go, and the three leaders. This takes you back to the first part of the race, doesn't it? Because it's the same three cars, pretty much in the same order, absolutely tied together. Just over half a second covered the three when they went on to this lap. And now, look, you can see the urgency in this. Rundle pulls out and tries to find a way around on the outside. Clark on the inside, Sparrow defending in the red car. The sea line back to entry goes now into the S's. Change on second because up on the inside has gone Simon Clark. Rundle drops to third and now nose to tail up towards the hairpin. They're going to be starting the last lap pretty soon and any one of these three could yet be the winner. Yeah, and you've got Rundle there that you saw his white helmet inside that 97 car, the red car that's leading at the moment, looking left, looking right, going right. I want to make my suit 2CV as wide as I possibly can. And this car back in the pits again. 
to take uh, the tank tape the car back up again with yellow tape and some cable ties because it's flapping around and obviously the marshals have warned them just to say look get it sorted and then they'll just use this last lap or so just for a bit of mileage and extra track time really but what brilliant last lap absolutely fantastic stuff david i'm going to leave you to finish this 27 seconds on the clock, one more lap then. Pete Sparrow is the man in the lead, just in second place is Simon Clark, who is much quicker through Gerrard. You can see the speed there, and Peter Rundle in third has dropped back just ever so slightly. There's also a slower car ahead as they come onto the step straight. That's going to get out of the way, but Pete Sparrow wants to use the toe of that car for a bit more grunt, doesn't he? So that's why he's gone after the back marker. Then he jinks out to the outside. Simon Clark's not going to be able to do anything there. That back marker might just have played into the hands of the leader. Peter Rundle third, he's dropping back. So now, ignore him. It's between these two. Through the S's they come. There's the hairpin to go. And is Simon Clark near enough? It looks as though all of that experience from Pete Sparrow is going to pay dividends. Sammy Fritchley started and did a great job. Pete Sparrow leads with a corner to go. Into the devil's elbow they come. And a time for Heroes trophy is going to be won seemingly by Pete Sparrow and Sammy Fritchley because with half a length between them, out of the devil's elbow, they come the top two Pete Sparrow fends off Simon Clark the checkered flag is ready and what a great team effort Sparrow and Fritchley win Clark and Cowling second and then for third place Liam Davis and Peter Rundle come through but it's not over yet lower down because there are still battles to be resolved Alec Graham has got Tom Perry right up behind him Without the windscreen, this man, Matthew Hollis, is being lapped. He is in 16th place after two pit stops. Alec Graham is going to hang on to fourth place, but only just. Tom Perry right there pulls out of the draft as they come across the line. He was 0.136 of a second back. And look at the next gaggle coming out of the elbow. Three wide up towards the line. Oswin, Storey and Wills in this little battle. And as they come through, Glenn Oswin takes sixth and seventh is still to be decided by the timekeepers. So close was it. It was an overlap as they came over the timing line. We will come back to that one in a second as the next gaggle of cars comes through. So the field having done 26 laps in the end and the chequered flag shown to a very happy Pete Sparrow to take the race win. Sammy Fritchley we'd heard from during the course of the race. Well, it was a different sort of a Citroen 2CV race, wasn't it? With the pit stops, with pockets of cars battling at different times. But it ends up with the traditional type of finish that we like to see nose to tail out of the last corner. And so, their first victories of the season. Sammy Fritchley and Pete Sparrow, the winners. From Wayne Cowling and Simon Clark, Liam Davis and Peter Rundle, third. Soloists are fourth, fifth and sixth. Alec Graham ahead of Tom Perry and Glenn Oswin in sixth spot. Time for a deep breath because, as ever, an awful lot happens in Citroen 2CV racing and thoughts and reflections on that will come in a few moments' time. We've heard from Sammy Fritchley, Pete Sparrow, I think, will have a lot to say for himself as well in that second stint because he had to work very hard to keep them all at bay and we'll hear from him after the break. Thanks, David. Actually, I have uh, Mervyn Rundle, the chairman of the 2CV Club, just to present the uh, awards. So over to you, Mervyn. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations to you both. Well done, Sammy. Thank you. Well done, Pete. Thank you very much Excellent. indeed. Cheers. So, Pete, just as you're getting kitted out, I'd like to congratulate you. That was a terrific race, but you were given the car in a great position, weren't you? Oh, I have to say, uh, all uh, respect to my co-driver here, she, uh, she did very, very well, um, produced a fantastic drive and um, pretty much made the race her own. It was relatively uh, easy for me to go and lose it. I almost did on the last few laps, but I uh, managed to keep it in and uh, bring it home. So, yeah, it was good. It was getting very hairy towards the end, as you pointed out. The chap behind you really getting up some pace. Yeah, no, he, um, I, I, I don't know whether I damaged the car slightly. I had a bit of a slide up at the hairpin, and uh, it didn't seem to be quite as good after that, and I was struggling to keep the distance. Obviously, they reeled me in pretty quickly after that, so um, I think that could have been down to me. But, um, no, the car kept going, had just about enough pace to stay with them, and, uh, yeah, we made a, made a win, so it's good. Absolutely, and congratulations also, Sammy. Like you said to me earlier, practice makes perfect, and actually, your tactics were bang on. This time, it did work. <laughs> we're very, very pleased. Definitely. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank well done, guys. David, back to you.